Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Stigma Free Society's Facebook Live event. My name is Jerry Friesen, also known as a recovering farmer. I am a stress and conflict management specialist working out of Manitoba. Because of my own journey with mental illness, I have a real passion in talking about it because it is in talking to others we can find a path forward for ourselves. You can learn more about me by visiting jerryfriesen.ca. Through this Facebook Live event, I am representing the Stigma Free Society, which is a Canadian registered charity that aims to reduce stigma of all kinds with a focus on mental health. This event is part of their Rural Mental Wellness Toolkit, an online community-based mental health program that creates access to mental health, education, and peer and support training, as well as practical and relatable resources for those living in rural and agricultural communities. You can find the toolkit at ruralmentalwellness.com. I am excited today to have the opportunity to chat with Megan and Gordon. Hi, Megan. Hi. Happy to How be here. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. You're looking, awfully, you're looking awfully cheerful today, Megan. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I love talking oh, about our project. So. <laughs> that's awesome. And I've, um, I haven't met you before. Uh, I've read a short bio, and I'm going to read that for our audience. It sounds incredibly interesting, and I look forward to chatting with you. Megan Ann Gordon is the program manager of the Rural Ottawa Youth Mental Health Collective. Rural Ottawa Youth Mental Health Collective comprises 12 partner organizations invested in the mental well being of youth ages 12 to 24 in rural Ottawa. And I know that sounds strange, folks, and we're going to find out what that means. Rural Ottawa. Founded in 2018, ROYMHC works to connect youth to mental health services through providing counseling, community engagement, information about services available, and educational workshops to both youth and adults who support youth. ROYMHC's goal is that by 2024, 80% of rural youth will feel supported in their mental health and know where to access services when needed. Megan holds a Master of Arts degree from the Department of Health Sciences at the University of Ottawa. She has worked for government, nonprofits, and has supported clients in, on the front lines. She grounds herself an intersectional feminist approach to research, evaluation, program development, and project management. Wow, Megan, that's an awesome bio. I'm looking forward to chatting, and I've said that before, and I'll start say it again. So can you start by telling our audience more detail about the Rural Ottawa Youth Mental Health Collective? Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to talk to you about the, the Rural Ottawa Youth Mental Health Collective. So for the rest of the interview, I will refer to it as the collective, uh, just because we have a very long title. It's a mouthful. So yeah, <laughs> the collective, as you, as you spoke about, um, it's a collective impact project of 12 partners. Uh, we're a really multidisciplinary group of partners. Um, so there are local community resource centers, uh, local community health centers, um, we have a few of our um, like Parents Lifeline of Eastern Ontario there, some grassroots organizations, so like youth associations and youth groups from rural Ottawa communities. Uh, we have Ottawa Public Health at the table. We have Ottawa Police Service. Um, so it's a really dynamic group of partners. And how we kind of came to be was in, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, all these times, all these partners, we kept seeing each other at events, at conferences, you know, here around the city. And we kept kind of saying, hey, are you noticing that the mental health needs in these rural communities that we serve, you know, they're increasing in uh, how often we see them, but then also increasing in the cases are more complex for youth. Um, and everyone kind of kept saying, yeah, I'm seeing that too. And, you know, we should do something about it. And then we're all just busy. Nothing was really happening until our our founding organization, the Osgood Youth Association, and our, our champion there, Nicole, um, she's the executive director. She 
kept hearing this in community and said, you know, why aren't we doing something about it? So she found us a very small pocket of funding uh, to bring all of the partners together. So these 12 organizations, she brought us together and we sat down and we really, we figured out what the issue was. Um, and then we figured out how we need to go about kind of addressing it. So our, we, our, we came to be in 2018. In the first couple of years, it was a lot about learning. It was really understanding, um, you know, where the issues were, what the gaps and services were, um, who are the important people that we need to talk to. And then we talked to those people. So we talked to youth, uh, we talked to service providers, we talked to parents, we talked to hockey coaches, scout leaders, anyone who would talk to us basically, and uh, really figured out what mental health issues looked like and what the experience of youth um, with mental health looked like in rural Ottawa. Um, so fast forward a few years, we've kind of, we, we've been very fortunate to receive funding from uh, the Laidlaw Foundation through their collective impact, uh, youth collective impact project. And um, we've been slowly building our project and we're in year five of a five year funding stream uh, with Laidlaw Foundation. And in this last year, in the last two years, we developed a theory of change with five strategies. Um, and they're all goals and ways in which our partner organizations can work to um, increase the mental health resources for youth in rural Ottawa and how to make sure that uh, we're doing it in an evidence-based way, that we're doing it in a way that makes sense, not for service providers, but for the youth that we're trying to support. Um, so it's been a really interesting model. And uh, I know you're itching to know more about rural Ottawa. <laughs> I am. I was going to ask. You've said it a few times. And when I read your bio, I'm going, well, rural uh, Ottawa, someone made a mistake here. So please explain that for me. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm hoping I can share my screen and show you a bit of a graphic. Does that work for you? Yes, absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Well, if I can make technology work, we're good. I think we can. We did try it out once. So. <laughs> Let's share. There we go. You should see. Our, okay, that's our logo. All right. Um, and oh, so this is the list, um, just while I'm getting to the right slide, this is the list of who our partners are. So our backbone organization that supports our project and has a kind of financial administrative oversight, it's Nippy and Rita Osgood Community Resource Center. And then number two on that list is Osgood Youth Association. So that's our founding uh, organization. That's where we started. Okay. And uh, these are the rest of our, um, the organizations on our committee. I Actually, it's an outdated list because we have a 12th organization that's just joined this year. And uh, then we have a youth advisory committee too, which we can talk about that because that's an interesting part of the project, but I will um, go forward here. So why rural Ottawa youth mental health? Um, so Ottawa is one of the largest municipalities in Canada. Um, it's 2,790.3 square kilometers. And actually 80% of our city is rural and only less than 10% of the population actually wow, lives in the really? rural area. Yeah, it's pretty unique. Um, because we are this unique municipality that most people think of as a urban, maybe a suburban city, um, most of the social service resources um, they exist in and are really catered to those living in the urban and suburban uh, parts of the city. So. This is the, the graphic that I always love to show. I show this to people that don't live in Ottawa, but I also show this to people who live in Ottawa. Uh, because when you live in the urban parts of Ottawa, it's really hard to conceptualize just how big Ottawa is. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, so if you look here, um, the orange, I think you can see my mouse. Yeah, um, yeah. the orange part of the city, that's considered the urban and suburban parts of the city. Okay. It's big. That is a, a chunk. We have over a million people in Ottawa. Um, and, and this is where they exist. So to go tip to tip. So over here is a community kind of like Constance Bay, Fitzroy Harbor. If you were to drive from Fitzroy Harbor to um, Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, which is kind of where my mouse is right now, that takes about 50 minutes, five zero, if there's no traffic. Um, if there's traffic and Ottawa has very 
bad traffic. Uh, it, you know, it can take upwards of for sure over an hour, if not an hour and a half or more. Um, if you're driving tip to tip from Fitzroy over to Cumberland, which is a little village here, uh, you're easily looking at an hour and a half. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a really big municipality. And then um, from downtown, so where my mouse is now is kind of where Parliament Hill is. And then uh, down here is kind of Burt's Rapid area, Rapids area. Um, yep. Again, that's that's an easy 45 minutes to an hour, uh, depending on traffic. And so sprinkled in this area here, the rural area, uh, there's 26 official villages in, in Ottawa. Um, so it's part of our rural land mass. We have 26 villages. Some of them are um, villages that are not much more than an intersection. You know, they, they don't yeah. have school. Their kids go from that community to other communities to go to school. Um, some of them are larger and have a Tim Hortons. Uh, the community that I live in, which is kind of in the south end, uh, we're one of the larger communities. And um, yeah, we have, a, we just got a Dollarama. So we're a little bit of a bigger, we're about 5,000 people. And we're about um, 20 minutes to uh, the next biggest uh, suburban area and probably about 35 to 40 minutes to downtown Ottawa. Yep. Um, Something really uh, unique about the city of Ottawa is that we have we have a pretty big transit system, uh, but the way that our municipal transit works is that the rural villages really are not served. Um, some of them have kind of a commuter bus. So we're talking like in the, the larger community that I live in. Um, it's a bus that kind of leaves the village in the morning and it goes to a, um, a it's called, we call it Tunney's Pasture, but that's kind of where government workers work. And then at the end of the day, that bus comes back to the village. So if you're a youth, if you're, you know, 15 years old and you have an appointment in, in the city, a mental health service that you're trying to access, the bus system, even though we do have one in, in my community, it's not made for you. It doesn't work yeah. for you. It works for a government worker who has a job downtown. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Megan. One, if I can just show one more yes. um, slide here, one more image. So, um, and this, I will admit, I just found on Reddit one day, but I thought it was a really good example of um, fitting different municipalities within the city of Ottawa. So our boundaries are kind of around here. It's kind of a heart shaped, yeah. um, but you can see actually that the city of Calgary fits into like one small portion of that. The city of uh, Edmonton fits into another small portion of our city. So um, other municipalities that are, you know, more urban and suburban, um, they are much smaller relative to the size of what Ottawa is. So our city no council, kidding. for example, uh, serves this huge landmass, whereas other, like the GTA is a little bit larger when you um, take the other municipalities, but there are individual municipalities in the GTA. Ottawa is all just one municipality. Wow, that, that sure paints the picture nicely. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. I think I can stop sharing so, now. Okay. So tell me, do you do you have a, a an idea of the number of youth that you would be kind of would be fall under your jurisdiction, for lack of a better word? You know that number exists. Um, I don't have it memorized, um, but like I said, the city of Ottawa we're over a million people now, and um, less than ten percent, uh, as per the last um, uh, statistics. Um, lived in the rural part of Ottawa, and then just a small portion of that is is youth. So it is, it's quite niche, um, and and I think that's why I, I know that's why um, all of the programs and services are located where people are more densely located. Oh, for sure, which yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. tell me what like what kind of mental health challenges would the youth there be experiencing? Yeah, so we, like I said, our, our project is very evidence-based. So we've done um, some pretty comprehensive surveys um, talking to youth. Uh, we did one in 2021, kind of 
at that point midway through the pandemic. Um, and then we're, we're actually just doing one right now too. It runs until about mid-April um, as a 2023 check-in for youth. Um, so yeah, the, the issues that we hear a lot of uh, from the youth through the survey or from um, you know parents and other service providers, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, um, you know, a, a lot of, um, you know, common, co I, I would say common issues among youth. Um, the, the biggest issue is that youth in rural Ottawa have nowhere to go. Um, they, when, when you call, um, you know, a, a local navigation, like a, an operator and uh, say, I'm looking for mental health support. And then they ask, okay, great, what's your postal code? And you give your, the first three letters of your postal code. On the operator screen, suddenly it's going to be very populated of these great um, and very specialized programs and services that they're eligible for as part of the city of Ottawa, yeah. um, which is great if you have very supportive parents um, who are able to maybe take the time off of work to drive you into the city uh, to access that appointment, because like we've already talked about, there's no transportation. Um, or, you know, you have some other way of going, you feel you can disclose to your parent or caregiver. Um, there's just, there's so many barriers um, to accessing any supports that, that are in the city of Ottawa, that it's just, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a huge challenge for, for youth. No kidding. Okay, but then, sorry, I'm going all over the map here and going That's away right. from the questions that were sent to you. So what I read in your bio, though, out loud before, is that by 2024, you want to make sure that 80% of the youth in rural Ottawa are supported. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? How do we do that? Yeah, uh, a lot of hard work. <laughs> so, and that, uh, that, uh, intended impact statement is, is what we call that, the 80% uh, by 2024. Um, that is actually um, based on our uh, research that we've done with youth. So in 2021, we found out that uh, about 40% of rural Ottawa youth were feeling supported in their mental health or knew where to go to find support. So that means about 60% were not feeling supported and didn't know where to go. Um, so we came up with that intended impact statement as, as a goal for our collective. Um, so how are we gonna get there? We, we have a theory of change. Um, it's something that our, our collective, our, all of the organizations uh, have really worked hard at developing in the last few years. And uh, we have uh, five strategies that have come out of that. So. All of our research told us that youth want uh, education sessions. So they want workshops within their community in places that they're already going. Uh, so this, you know, for some communities looks like a hockey team um, doing a mental health workshop with one of our one of our partners does the, the clinical portion of the workshop. And um, or in another, we, we did a workshop recently with a cadets group and that was really successful. Um, different youth groups have invited us as well and we've done groups, it's, it's been really successful. Another um, big thing that we're doing is um, similar education series, but for um, the support circle, the, the circle of support for youth. So in every community that looks different too. Uh, in some communities, it could be a youth worker. That's kind of that mentor could be that scout leader, the girl guide leader, the hockey coach uh, could just be a really trusted parent in the community. Okay. Um, so this upcoming weekend, actually, we have a training summit for rural mentors of youth. And we're going to train uh, 40 rural community members, adult community members, and equip them with the skills uh, in Safe Talk, which is a suicide prevention training. And then uh, in the afternoon portion, they can have uh, training in how to help a friend, which is kind of like a systems navigation training or motivational interviewing. So that's how to effectively um, chat with, with youth. Um, so that's one part of what we're doing for for building the capacity of the adults who are daily working with youth um we're advocating we are doing a lot of advocating for increased investment in um in clinical services in rural ottawa we have one example that has worked incredibly well where a local organization that works with youth uh, the osgood youth association they have partnered with a not-for-profit um that works rurally and they uh the non-for-profit pays for a mental health counselor to be at the osgood youth association one day a week okay. and 
that is so incredibly well used by oh, the really? room. Yeah. She's constantly on a waiting list. Um, and she's in, she's in Osgood doing her sessions. Uh, but youth come from the neighboring villages as well. And they travel and they're more, we found out they're more likely to travel to a neighboring rural village than they are to travel into the city where yeah. youth just don't feel like the programs and services that exist there are, are made for rural folks because really they're not. There's different challenges and it's a unique experience living rurally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this mental health counselor actually um has expertise in, in what it is to live rurally and understands and can refer to resources that are, again, accessible rurally. So we really, we're, we're advocating hard uh, to have dollars go to our partners that can provide this clinical service and replicate that type of model in and around uh, rural Ottawa. So that's that's just some of the things that we're working on. I could keep going, but. Well, yeah, it's incredible, Megan. So uh, th th there's a bunch of questions running around in my head, but Great. Uh, Hit me. When, when, when you talk about the youth and, mm -hmm. and I know I come from a generation that's a little bit removed from the youth of today. Um, I, I'm curious, how open are the youth in rural Ottawa? How open are they to talking and, and to, to seeking that help that's needed? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, it's And, and I, like I'm, I'm definitely a project manager, so I'm kind of behind the scenes. I'm not the front line um, counselor working with the youth, but my my experience working with um, the youth and, and the folks who work with the youth um, is that they they are open to it, and it, it is even. I feel like I'm a different generation than youth now too, and um, more so than even when I was a youth. Right? It's it's becoming more. Um, acceptable uh, and you know common to, to seek these resources the best model again is to have that um, mental health counselor in a place that youth are already going so if if there when there is stigma it's not if it's when there is the stigma surrounding um, accessing these resources and and these are really small, close knit communities. So if, if someone is dropped off, you know, you see Billy down the street getting dropped off at a mental health counselor's uh, office, everybody knows why you're going there. But you see the same kid, Billy, getting dropped off at the Osgood Youth Association. You don't know if Billy's there for a, you know, a soccer night or a pizza night or accessing mental health services. Um, so that is the model that we are really trying to strive for. Um, we're trying to access youth um, in groups that they're already in to do these training sessions. So we're not asking youth to sign up for, um, you know, a workshop on, on anxiety. It's that they're already part of this uh, cadets group and we're joining the cadets group and just giving some very casual, very, um, you know, approachable information on uh, coping skills. And um, that's all done by a clinical worker. And hey, if you actually want to have an appointment with this clinical worker, here's the contact information for them. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a warm referral process too. Yeah, uh, we are, We're really trying hard to make it accessible for youth. Oh, that's just so good. But, and you did touch on a little bit and that was gonna be my next question is, what kind of stigma is there out there regarding mental health and seeking help for it? Yeah, I think that's a, it's an issue for all youth, um, all over rural and not rural. Um, I think it's it's we hear it it's heightened in rural communities, right? So that example of Billy from next door, and you know Billy's, I don't know, grocery store worker sees them go to this, you know, stories get spread through small towns and villages I like wildfire. I'm from Northern Ontario, very small little community. I know it exactly what it's like and what it's going to be like for my kids who are growing up in a rural village. Um, the stigma is real. And, and, and we hear that that is a barrier to youth accessing, um, you know, supports at school because that's often a question that we get asked well why why isn't um why aren't the youth going through the school board because there are some sort of programs and services through the school board and while that does work for some youth um we also hear that it perpetuates uh, mental health challenges for yeah. other youth because yeah. then they are stigmatized with accessing yeah. these uh, resources and so it's just it's not working 
it's not working for all. So that's why we're, we're kind of taking a more community-based uh, approach to it and kind of normalizing it a little bit. Yeah, you know, uh, and I always think there's a benefit to living in rural Manitoba. And we often talk about the benefit of raising our kids in rural Manitoba. Right. And yet that piece you just talk about when you're in the city, you can walk half a block or a block and you kind of disappear from the sight of everybody else and you can right. do what you want. Right. And whereas yeah. in rural Ottawa, like in rural other communities, it's not that easy. That's right. All right. And you know, do you know what, Megan, and this happens every time I do these, we're running short on time here. And so in the intro, here's I'm going to ask some, something, a different question kind of all together. But in, in the introduction, I talked about your intersectional feminist approach. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how does your focus on intersectionality overlap with the work you do for the collective? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I come from a community development and health promotion background. Uh, so I joined the collective in 2018 as, as one of the partner agencies. I was the representative for the partner agency that I worked for at the time. And um, so community development and health promotion uh, has, a, and it's really important to uh, understand and appreciate and value the intersectionalities um, that happen. And um yeah, uh, how how is that done in the in the work? It's it's making sure that we're connecting with the right people, um, with the systems that are uh, that the the people that are you know experiencing mental health challenges or the support people um, that are you know working with the youth experiencing uh, mental health challenges. Um, how do those intersectionalities uh, play into the actual accessing of programs and services? What barriers are created uh, because of systems that are out of control um, of, of the youth that we're working uh, with. So yeah, we I, I would say I take that approach to everything that I do yeah. in yeah. my life um, yeah. to, to really um, think kind of on a macro level of, of how can we um, support youth the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's incredible. And Megan, you're doing incredible work there. And it's interesting to hear you talk about it. I've learned so much in the last 27 minutes. And I wish we could talk a little bit longer. But unfortunately, our time has basically run out. Is there anything you'd like to add before we close up for today? Um, I guess I can just do a little shout out that we have social media. If folks want to follow us on social media, you can find us um, at Rural Ottawa Youth on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And on Twitter, I think we are um, at Rural OTT Youth couldn't fit the whole Ottawa in there. So we shortened it to OTT. Um, yeah. And uh, if you're, if you're listening from local Ottawa and your youth, we do have a survey that um, if you do our survey, um, you're entered into a draw of one of 20, $100 uh, gift certificates. Um, so there's some good incentive there. And if you're local, we have the, we, I think we have two seats left at our training this weekend and there's still time to register. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Send me an email. My email is Megan at rural Ottawa And okay, I'm happy you wanna to just, you just want to repeat that to make sure people can jot yep. it down. Sure. So it's Megan M E A G A N at rural Ottawa youth.ca. Oh, that's perfect, Megan. And, and one of the things that's really excited me of late is, is when, when we talk about mental health issues, and of course, my passion and focus has been in, in mental health and agriculture, um, but I see the work that's being done across Canada in those areas. I hear about what you're doing in rural Ottawa. Again, that's going to take some getting used to, but it sure makes a lot of sense to me now. I get excited about the 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 resources and the stuff in quotation marks that's available for folks out there because we know mental health challenges exist. Mm -hmm. uh, if anything, COVID taught us that they do more than exist. Uh, we understand it better. And so I really appreciate uh, the work you're doing, Megan. And I really appreciate the fact that you took time to come on the stigma-free Facebook live event. Um, your insights into mental health and wellness certainly have resonated with me, as I'm sure they have with our audience. So I'd like everybody to take home the message that it's okay to talk and it's okay to reach out for help. 
And what I often say about my own journey is there's hope and there's relief. So folks, if you're interested in, in what the Rural Mental Wellness um, Toolkit can do for you, please visit ruralmentalwellness.com. If you're interested in these interviews or other interviews that get done on these Facebook Live events, you can find them there as well. So thanks again, Megan, and everybody else. Till next time, stay safe. Thank you. Thanks.